Welcome to part one of the military pouch tutorial. Let's start with a sphere and make it a poly mesh 3D. Then go to initialize to make it a cube cube. Turn on the floor and identify where the blue line is, which is the Z forward. Then now use the Z modeler tool to simplify the cube. So scale it in the Z axis, then scale it up in the Y to make it a rectangular shape. Now turn off the floor and hold on Control Shift to drag a copy. And then one more copy, we need uh, three in total. And hold on the control, which is the mask, then press Alt to invert and make the first panel shorter in the bottom. And do the same to the middle one and make the top shorter. And then use Z modeler to delete the uh, top face. Well, we need to do it to the bottom as well and turn on double so we can see it better. Now we need to bridge the bottom two open holes. So drag to the right to pull down the depth and up and down to control more or less division. And do the same to the top one holes. Give like uh, six divisions. Okay, so now we got the basic shape. Uh, I just want to work on half of the model. So isolate half of it and then delete it. Now I need to adjust the middle to make it longer. Another trick is to use slice curve. Uh, it's an easy way to create a polygroup. Also add an extra division where you need it. And now insert two edge loops. So we use the Q mesh uh, snap across to the other side. So looking at the model, I decide to add a middle line so I can keep the bottom part apart as quad. Delete the bottom faces, then I will use bridge edge so we got a little more control. So you can see we created uh, four triangles to make the bottom surface there uh, in order to make it quad. I'll hold on all and delete the edge then connecting the two points just to clean it up. Now do a mirror and mirror and well, just to have an overall look of the piece. So looking at the reference photo, uh, the front panel is not supposed to be that flat. So we need to do some adjustment. Now 
Now I got the overall shape I want. Uh, I will insert an edge loop to hold the, uh, the shape better. So now I will connect the two points using the bridge two points and then delete the edge in the middle. I'll insert another edge on top of it and then bridge and delete like before uh, to clean it up further. Using stitch to get rid of the extra point. Yeah, I like to have a clean topology. Now we can do is to hit crease PG, which is crease polygroup, then use dynamic sub to give uh, to preview the end result. So now use slice curve to make a cut near the top. We will add some thickness near the area later on. And now do a group by normal. Hover over a face and poly group, then a poly loop. So we can create a different poly group around the edge of the pouch. Now because we have a different poly group, we can use Q mesh to create a little bit of lip around the edge. And now hover over the edge and then hold on Alt, select Insert to remove that additional edge around the lip area to keep it clean. So we can uh, press D and Shift D to activate or deactivate dynamic preview since we are still in the edge insert mode. Uh, we can easily add support edges where it makes sense. Since we have the dynamic sub preview, uh, we can see the result on the fly, which is pretty cool. Now just play around with the crease level and the smooth sub D value to tighten the bevel edge a little bit. So looking at the overall piece for now, I think it's a little bit too narrow. So hold on, Control Alt, and then select the edge since it's uh, symmetry. And then just uh, select the gizmo to widen the whole piece up a little bit. Then do the uh, same thing to the thickness as well. So now insert additional edge loop. We need that uh, for Q mesh, the top surface. Since we added some edge loops for other areas earlier, now uh, you can see some very close edges. Uh, so just spend some time and spread out the verts so that way the corner will be nice and round when we subdivide. The last step for the part one tutorial is to add some extra divisions for the area that doesn't have enough resolution. That way we'll have a more even resolution across the whole piece.
So this pretty much wrap up the first part of the tutorial series. Let's take a break and I will see you in the next one.